So let's take a quick run through the basic choices we have in filter selection. I could spend all day just on this subject alone. This isn't intended as a thorough review, just a little bit about each type, the filtration levels that can be achieved, the pros and cons, and the best use of each one. We start with the most basic type of filtration. I see a lot of this. It's very simple and cheap. It provides reasonable coarse filtration. It does require a lot of land area. It does present a water hazard on your property for the neighbor kids to fall into. It's good for ground runoff filtration before entering the pond, filtering backwash water out of a filter before it goes into a pond, or runoff discharge before it leaves your property. Don't overlook it. It does work very well. One of the advents as we get to uh, higher levels of filtration that we're seeing, that we're employing, is multi-stage filtration because there are really no filters that do it all well without massive issues of clogging, uh, overloading, back backwashing issues. So multi-stage multi filtration is becoming more necessary as we get into the finer filtration targets. And the multi-stage filtration process starts at the source. The more particulate you remove by simple means, the less is required of more expensive fine filtration systems. And as an aside, that's the, that's the entire process of filtration and water treatment. Take care of the things at the lowest, most inexpensive level before going to the next step. And this is a good illustration of a flood bench system with a simple and cheap strainer. It gets out the big chunks before it goes to finer filtration, and that means that you don't have to pay for the additional filtration of the stuff that can be removed at this level. But there is no fine filtration that's possible in this. This is good for flood benches, hydroponic flood pools for lettuce and so on. The simple lowly gravity screen filter, uh, it was considered adequate for years for flood floors and still is for many applications. I see them on a regular basis. It's simple, inexpensive way to remove big chunks uh, the filtration levels are, are not very fine, generally 300 plus microns or, uh, or larger, but it doesn't take any power. Primary filtration for ground runoff and floor washdown is where I see it now, and uh, flood irrigation systems that operate for short periods of time, for example, that are used just during a spring crop or, or just for a short period of time on a fall mum crop and no more they can get by with a filter like this. Vibrating screen filters came to a fore for a while. They're actually quite attractive. They offer a wide range of filtration and multi-stage filtration in a single unit. So the top layer can be used to filter down to one level and then the next layer. So we can start out with, for example, 300 microns, and then the layer underneath that filter down to 100 or 50 microns. It's also beneficial that there's no backwash water to discharge. Uh, the, the particulate disposal just drops into a bin, you haul it away and throw it out in the field. There is also no consumable media to buy, change, or dispose of. The cons are that the filtration is limited to about 30 microns, 30 to 50 microns. It is gravity flow only. It does consume electricity, although not a significant amount, and it can be a little bit noisy depending on where you put it. The best uses are primary and secondary filtration for flood irrigation and other gravity flow applications. And I refer to primary and secondary and tertiary uh, filtration. You can kind of break it down that way. Primary filtration is taking out the big chunks, the leaves, the soil particulate, etc. Secondary filtration, consider that bringing it down to 50, maybe as little as 25 microns, 20 microns. And tertiary filtration is where we're bringing that down to 10 microns or less. And that's kind of how I see staging working. Anything less than that, than two or three stages to get down to that level, generally results in too frequent of backwashing and clogging, excessive clogging. 
The standard screen filter, we've seen this for years and years, provides good intermediate inline pressure filtration. Good fine, fine filtration is possible, but it gets pretty expensive pretty fast when you're doing that. And that's generally below about 30 microns. Variable filtration levels can be had by changing out the screens in some units. And there are auto or manual backwashing uh, filters available. The cons are that it requires more frequent backwashing. It's just simply limited by the size of the canister that you see. The smaller the canister, the less particulate matter it'll hold before it needs to be backwashed. That's a major problem we see in utilizing this type of a filter uh, where we've got heavier loads uh, is that uh, the, the frequent complaint is that they spend most of their day in backwash mode and interrupting the irrigation procedures. Part of that can be handled by putting them in line, as you see here, uh, so that when one is backwashing, the other one is operating. It does have a minimal particulate holding capacity, and they are quite expensive when you get to very fine filtration levels. This is another one, a moving media filter. They're popular in flood systems now and with runoff filtration. These are capable of about 100 microns down to 7 microns, but like most filters, efficiency varies widely depending on the size, the flow rate, the type of, and grade and thickness of the media paper. There isn't a backwash discharge. It's gravity flow, so all of the discharge goes into the tank. It does have disposable particulates, so we use this kind of a filter when we don't have the ability to backwash in line, uh, and we need to be able to dispose of that without backwashing. It's a good primary or secondary mid-level filtration. It's quiet, and they're very reliable. The cons are it's a lower efficiency of filtration depending on the media and flow. Typically, we see 45 to 60 percent efficiency in these types of filters. They are gravity flow only. Uh, the consumable media can be expensive. We've seen more growers going away from this lately because of the expense of the media. Uh, but where they work, they work well. And it's also can be seen as a negative because it's a landfill contributor. You, uh, it's kind of tough to, to deal with the cloth once it's full. Microscreen drum filters are uh, something that's a relative newcomer to the horticulture industry. They've been used in the fish industry for years. They're replacing a lot of the screen and the rolling media filters lately. The biggest advantage is that they, they don't use any media, and they're very simple to operate. They operate as a good primary to mid-level filtration. Uh, they have good filtration efficiency as long as you don't overrun them or overfill them. They are continuously self-cleaning, and the little screens that you see in the squares are easily replaced if they're damaged. The cons are that they are continuously backwashing, so there's a continuous effluent flow. That needs to be treated after that. You still have to answer the question of where do you go with that. And they are subject to bypassing. If you overfill them, you can end up with the material still in your tank. Again, they work very effectively in flood irrigation uh, recovery and for runoff filtration from ground runoff. Bag filters have been overlooked. They've been around for years. Uh, but they've been overlooked until now because they require manual changing. But as we see more restriction on filter backwash runoff, they're becoming more popular. They do offer really good fine filtration. We can bring these down effectively to about 5 microns. The bags are interchangeable on the fly, so you can, uh, uh, you can have varying uh, filter, uh, filtration levels depending on the stage of the crop or the type of a crop that you can use, you just swap out one set of bags that are, say, micron, uh, 5 micron with a set of bags that's 20 micron, and on you go. Uh, they can be set up for a very quick bag change. So the old problem of, of having to take 30 minutes to take the bags out uh, has been solved. And, and these can be swapped out in a matter of a minute or two. 
the cons are there is no auto back flushing mode, so you do have to change the bag. Uh, bag changes require shutdown, so as you see in this illustration, uh, you'll want to have a couple of different filters side by side, so while one is being changed, the other one can continue to filter. The bags are a consumable cost, not significant, but they are there. And it's also contribution to a contribution to landfill. Uh, best uses for this is uh, medium filtration to fine filtration. We use them uh, prior to membrane filtration and prior to treatment, uh, pre-treatment filtration, where we can't backwash or, or where there are backwash restrictions. And of course, one of the oldest and simplest forms of filtration, depth media filters uh, or media filters are regaining popularity. Here we see a shallow sand bed filter. Uh, it provides good intermediate filtration. You don't want to do uh, very much with primary filtration or very much reliance on fine filtration, but intermediate filtration down to maybe 30 to 50 microns is the best that you're going to get out of this type of a shallow bed filter. They can be backwashed automatically or manually. Uh, they must be backwashed. Uh, they do have variable filtration capacity depending on the, on the design, the sizing, the media selection that goes in them. If you use a silica sand versus a glass media or a multimedia. They are highly scalable to any flow rate or daily volume simply by adding the number of filters that you need to have. Uh, in this case, we see, uh, we see four different filters going into uh, two lines. They do project, present high backwash volumes and uh, moderate particulate capacity. So they do need to be backwashed. Generally, you can't go more than a day without having to backwash them. This is a little different version of the same thing. Um, uh, deep uh, depth media filters, making the, uh, the media filter deeper allows for much finer filtration because there's more de bed depth and a lot more particulate capacity. So here we can bring these down to as little as two or two and a half microns of filtration via fine filtration. Uh, this photo shows, uh, I believe it's a five or 600 gallon a minute a flood floor application, uh, which we're filtering down to five microns. Uh, the large particulate holding capacity before backwash allows us to go anywhere from at least a day to several days before backwashing is required. It's highly scalable also, just like the regular uh, shallow sand or shallow bed media filters. And of course, it does have an even higher backwash volume. It's good for any secondary or tertiary filtration, anything below 70 microns down to, as I said, 2 microns. These work very well. And this is a newer version, a large diameter deep media filter that we're using uh, and others in the industry or others in other industries are using. It's relatively new application in our industry. The same advantages as smaller depth and uh, shallow bed media filters but this allows for a larger flow at a lower cost. Uh, these filters in this pictures are about 80 inches high and 80 inches in diameter uh, for reference purposes. Not to overlook uh, a very important thing, filter media can make a substantial difference in the performance of existing filters or new filters. For example, the, the crushed glass media that's shown here uh, is, has been found to be very effective, 20 to 30 percent finer filtration with about 20 to 25 percent less back flush water. Uh, paying close attention to the type and source and capabilities of the media is critical. So it's, it's not such a thing as just picking a filter and a flow rate. Look at the media that you're putting into the filter also. A, 70, a filter that's doing 70 to 100 microns of filtration with silica sand, for example, can have that filtration level drop down to as little as 50 and sometimes even lower uh, micron sizing by changing the media to this type of media. 
and it's only a fraction of the cost of the filter, it's pretty silly to or foolish to skimp on media. So buy the best filter canister or vessel, but then put the right media in it. And of course, cartridge filters have been around for years. They offer good fine filtration, generally down to about five micron variable filtration levels. It's easy to pop out the the uh, the cartridge and pop a new one in. Uh, there isn't a good backwashing mode on these. The uh, cartridge changes require a complete shutdown. The cartridges can clog very quickly in high turbidity, and they are very subject to biofouling uh, from chemicals, from, uh, from almost any source. They could be biofouled quite easily. They're good for tertiary filtration uh, from 20 down to perhaps 5 micron. Uh, good for pre-membrane filtration, uh, filtration pre-treatment filtration. If you um, uh, if 